So looking to help bridge the information gap about different development technologies, I want to sit down with one of my project managers and discuss the Go language or Golang. So today I want to cover where it's used, how it can be useful, and some core benefits associated to it from both a development standpoint as well as for app performance. At a high level, what are some of the pros of using Go? It's straightforward to learn. Really, any programmer who has a development background with other languages like Java, C, or C++ can learn it easily. The syntax, or rules that define the language for Go, are neat and clean, making it easier to understand when something is not working right. Go is also very fast and lightweight. How much faster is Go compared to something like Java? Go directly compiles into the native binary of the host machine. It's not like Java that compiles into bytecode. With Java, you need to have a virtual machine installed on the server to run the bytecode, making it a two-step process. One speed example would be when calculating the factorial of a number. For example, if you write a Go and a Java program to calculate the factorial of 10,000 numbers, the Go program will do that process in around 0.03 seconds, while the Java program will do it in about 0.14 seconds. So you can see the difference here, and even when the number increases, Go will do the calculations in a fraction of the time it takes Java. The larger the program, the more you can see the differences. There are many prominent companies that use Go. Primarily what I've seen is that whenever a company is hosting and providing media, like Netflix, YouTube, or SoundCloud, you'll find Go. A lot of on-demand services like Uber, they're already using it too. And the same can be said about anyone looking to create applications that emulate these tech giants. For example, if someone comes to us wanting to create something like Uber, we develop the front end in a native language like Swift for iOS and Kotlin for Android. When it comes to accessing the backend server, Go is a great option for its concurrency and can handle thousands of requests in parallel. And we'll talk more on concurrency later. Now let's look at some other ways Go is used. Go can be used for web development using WebAssembly. It's not a replacement for JavaScript because JavaScript is still the ruling platform, but WebAssembly works along with it. So if you have some code that needs higher performance, you can write that small piece of code in WebAssembly and use it alongside JavaScript. Knowing this, we can now compile our Go code into a WebAssembly binary file. You then can continue writing with Go, collect or compile it into WebAssembly, and then use that in your web browser. Go4JS is a transpiler. A transpiler is something that compiles one language into a different language. It compiles the current code written in one language into a machine code binary or bytecode, like in the case of Java. Go4JS is written in Go and converts Go code into JavaScript so you can continue working on your project. It supports every syntax and every feature of Go. And this is another way of using Go in a browser other than compiling it into WebAssembly. Go interfaces with different types of programming languages and is a universal or general purpose language. No matter if an app is written for iOS, Android, or cross-platform, you can use Go to establish a link between the front and back ends of the application. Suppose you already built a system with Node.js on the back end and Swift for the front end for iOS. In this case, a small section of code can be used to achieve greater performance to handle more requests in parallel, and that small piece of code can be written in Go. Then, you can use a message queue to interact between your Node.js portion of the code and your Go portion of the code. That's essentially a pipeline where two processes can communicate. Go code can run on Raspberry Pi. To run on Raspberry Pi, there is one Go compiler called TinyGo. You can use that to compile your code and get the binary to run on Arduino microcontrollers as well. So like Go, TinyGo is also backed and supported by Google. Now, it's still in its infancy, but you can write code using Go, and then use TinyGo to compile it into a binary that runs on microcontrollers. Another way to use Go is for microservices, to help speed up mobile applications. This is how we at Zico primarily use the language. You can break down a large system into different tasks that we'll refer to as A, B, and C. To tackle these tasks, we write microservices in Go. We then have a message queue that's used to communicate between each of these microservices. The beauty of this is that it can handle requests in parallel. If task A is highly backed up and having issues, that means the users are accessing a specific feature in the mobile application, and that requires task A to work more. 
So what you do is scale task A by putting a load balancer in front of it. This means you don't have to scale up task B or C, so you're saving on resources in terms of processing power and not getting other services bogged down. So based on what features are getting more traffic in the app, you can precisely scale that microservice. And that's the beauty of microservice architecture. If we're putting this into layman's terms, you can think of a grocery store's checkout line. There are four lanes open the weekend before Thanksgiving. If the employee in lane one is getting slammed by shoppers with their hundreds of items, you can switch that person out for someone who maybe has some more experience, a more seasoned employee. This represents the load balancer. In this example, all the lanes would have the same function or job, but it paints a picture about having several services functioning at the same time. Talking more on concurrency, concurrency means you're running tasks in parallel means you're time slicing the functions, allowing the processor some time to take on function one, then jump to function two, to three, and so on. So in the end, it all looks like it's running in parallel. Go is especially useful for making concurrent programs. The difference between Java and Go and other languages like C or C++ is when you want to write simultaneous functions. Go has a unique feature that's built within the language that's called Go Routines. The beauty of it is that Go routines are so lightweight you can have millions of Go routines running and doing the job on a simple medium memory server. In terms of speed, Go routines are lightweight compared to the threads that Java uses. It's also worth noting that writing a code to make a concurrent in Java, C, or C++ is much more difficult. Really, what you want in a web server is the ability to handle hundreds of thousands of requests in parallel. Go is specifically built for that and is hugely scalable. Go also provides a mechanism called garbage collection. What it does is initiates a small routine that runs alongside your code and keeps checking for unused memory. While running this routine, it'll keep asking until it can remove that background process. In C or C++, you'll need to clear that memory or heap manually. If you don't do it, it'll waste your memory capacity, and ultimately, the program will crash because of lack of memory. That being said, you don't want to run garbage collection too often because your program will become slow. Thankfully, Go is an excellent enhanced garbage collector built in. To give an example, it's like you're in a boat that's filling up with water. You grab a bucket to shovel out the excess, and the garbage collector is basically scooping out the water to make sure you stay afloat. With the recent improvements from Go, the garbage collection has continued to improve even more. So why did our team at Zico start using Go? Well, we were looking for something that could scale our projects as they grew in size. At the time, we were only focusing on .NET and Node.js. We need something that our developers could learn quickly. We primarily use Go for web server development, for working with REST APIs and any background services. For example, if someone requests for an image to be processed, that request comes in and we run a background service that's running Go. One of the early programs that needed Go was a consumer-facing application, because that's where scalability comes into play. Tons of random users, numbering in the thousands, logged onto the service. That creates a strain on the connection speed and performance. It was also graphically intensive and needed more microservices to make sure the connection was smooth. In popular games, the backend should be running something that can simultaneously scale and handle thousands of requests. Go is a great fit for that. We also plan to use Go for the front end to build web apps that run on browsers. And we can do this by leveraging WebAssembly. If you're working on a project in either web or mobile apps with a back end, you might be stuck on a feature rollout, or your design's not quite feeling right, or you don't have quite the technical know-how to get to launch. If you need any help in software development, our team at Zico can help you. Visit zico.com today to see what services we offer, or give us a call at 603 881-9200 to speak to one of our experts. Let us help you move forward in your project today.